Uh, my name is Joe. I'm going to be presenting YOLO, a real-time object detector. This is joint work with Ross Gershik, Santosh Davala, and Ali Farhadi. So, as you've already uh, heard about in the previous presentations, object detection is simply you have an image, you want to put boxes around the things in that image and say uh, what those objects are. So, uh, humans do object detection really easily, uh, but this is something that computers have struggled with historically for a long time, and there have been a lot of advances recently in making detection more accurate. Uh, however, object detection is still pretty slow. So for a long time, deformable parts models were the gold standard in object detection, and they took about 14 seconds to process an image. Uh, and a couple of years ago, RCNN came out and offered a huge boost in terms of accuracy, but even longer processing time, so about 20 seconds per image. Now, if you imagine using one of these detectors in an application, say a self-driving vehicle, uh, if you have a car going down the highway at 60 miles per hour, in 20 seconds your car is going to go about a third of a mile. Uh, and this is the time between when your car sees an object and when your car realizes that object is in front of it. Uh, obviously a third of a mile isn't going to cut. So we need something a little bit faster and a lot of uh, recent work has focused on making RCNN faster. Uh, so fast RCNN offered some improvement in accuracy and also brought processing time down to two seconds per image. So this is a lot better, but our car is still going uh, about half a football field in that time. Faster RCNN, which was developed concurrently with YOLO, uh, brings, brings detection speed to 140 milliseconds per image. And this is, this is also better, so now we're at seven frames per second. Uh, our car is only going to go 12 feet in this amount of processing time, so uh, obviously better than a third of a mile, but still enough time to plow through sort of a similarly sized vehicle in front of it. So just going to do a little demo here of what these detection speeds actually look like in practice. Uh, it's important to sort of get a feel for them. So this is a detector running at two seconds per frame, the same speed as fast RCNN. Uh, obviously there's a lot of delay between frames. You can see uh, as I move around there's a lot of latency. So if we increase the speed to faster RCNN, uh, this is you know running about seven frames per second. Yeah, there's still there's still a little bit of lag, but it's a little bit more continuous, which is nice. Uh, but there's still some latency between frames, uh, and the video is pretty choppy. What we really want is something smoother. So this is YOLO running in real time on my laptop, and you can see it automatically sort of tracks me as I move around the frame, um, and it's running in real time speeds just on this laptop. So. YOLO runs uh, in, in actually more than real time uh, at 45 frames per second or 22 milliseconds per image uh, and this speed comes at a little bit of price in terms of accuracy. Uh, we get 63 about mean AP uh, on Pascal VOC as opposed to fast and faster RCNN which are in the 70s and even higher than that as you uh, recently heard. However, since acceptance we've actually gotten this number up a little bit further to 69 average precision and we expect that there are uh, some more advances that that we could do. So to get detection speeds to be this fast, we actually had to rethink sort of the standard object detection uh, system. So when we started this project, there were two main object detection frameworks, deformable parts models and RCNN. Deformable parts models people are probably familiar with. You run a classifier sliding window over an image uh, and high classification scores correspond to detections. RCNN, uh, instead of using sliding window, first extracts region proposals using selective search and then classifies those regions with a more powerful classifier, uh, CNN-based classifier. Uh, and our big insight was that both of these methods are using these region-based classifiers and they're looking at an image, you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands of times to perform detection. So this involves uh, a, a lot of evaluation of these classifiers over and over again on different parts of the image. And what we really wanted was a, a neural network, one neural network that you could just give it the full image and get detections out of in a single pass. Uh, and the advantage of this is that instead of looking at a network, you know, or instead of looking at an image thousands or hundreds of thousands of times to do detection, now YOLO, uh, with YOLO you only look once at an image to perform the full detection pipeline. So to be able to train this neural network, we had to come up with a new parameterization for object detection. Uh, 
So if you have an image that you want to perform detection on, first we imagine overlaying a grid on top of that image. And each cell in this grid is going to be responsible for predicting a few different things. The first thing is each cell is going to predict some number of bounding boxes. So for example, this cell in the upper right is going to predict some bounding boxes and also confidence values for each of those bounding boxes. And this is the probability that that box contains an object. Uh, and there may be some grid cells that don't have any objects nearby them. So this one in the bottom right is going to predict a few bounding boxes. We don't care what they are, we just want their confidence values to be very low since they don't contain any objects. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is each object or each uh, grid cell. Oh, sorry. So when you when you visualize all of these predictions together, uh, you have basically a map of all of the objects in the image and a bunch of boxes uh, ranked by their confidence value. So now you know basically what uh, where the objects are in the image, but you don't necessarily know what they are. So the next thing we're going to do is have each grid cell predicts some class probabilities, uh, and this is going to look like a coarse segmentation map of the image. So you're going to have things like bicycle and car. Uh, and one important feature of this mask is that it's not uh, saying that this grid cell contains that object. It's really conditional probability. So if a grid cell predicts car, it's not saying that there is a car in this grid cell. It's just saying that if there is an object in this grid cell, then that object is a car. And this parameterization, uh, so so if you take the probability, the conditional probabilities, and then multiply them by the confidence values uh, that we computed earlier, you basically get all of the bounding boxes weighted by their uh, actual probabilities for containing that object. And now we have a bunch of detections for this object. Uh, we have a lot of boxes. A lot of them are very low confidence value for any class. So we simply threshold the predictions, uh, perform non-max suppression to get rid of some duplicate detections, and we have our full uh, detections for that image. This parameterization fixes the output size for detections. So now we have uh, this tensor that we're basically trying to predict. So we have a grid, and each grid cell is going to predict some bounding boxes and some class probabilities. Uh, so for example, for Pascal VOC, we used a 7x7 seven seven grid. We used two bounding boxes per cell, and there are 20 classes. So this gives us a 7x7x30 seven by seven by output tensor, uh, or about 1,500 outputs. And this isn't that many parameters for a neural network to predict. Uh, ImageNet is 1,000 classes. So we have, we have this output tensor, and all we want to do is train a neural network uh, to predict this output tensor. So now in one pass, we can go from an image uh, straight to this output, tensor, this output tensor, which corresponds to the detections for that image. And this is really powerful because we are good at evaluating uh, one pass through a neural network. So we've uh, essentially sped up the detection pipeline to the point that it's now, uh, it can be the same speed as a classification pipeline. Uh, it's just one evaluation of this neural network. This also means we're predicting all of these detections simultaneously. So our model implicitly incorporates uh, global context uh, in the detection process. So it can learn things about which objects tend to co-occur together, uh, this relative size and location of objects, and things like that. So we want to or we want to predict uh, full full detections from a single image, which means we also have to train on full images. Uh, and let's see how we do that. So we're going to get an image and we're going to get some ground truth labels for that image. The first thing we want to do is match uh, each each ground truth label with the appropriate grid cell that we want to predict uh, at test time that detection. So all we do is we take the center of a bounding box and wherever that center falls, whatever grid cell it falls into, that grid cell is going to be responsible for predicting that detection. So the first thing we do is adjust that cell's class predictions. In this case we want it to predict dog. Uh, and we also have to adjust that cell's uh, bounding box proposals. So we look at the cell's predicted boxes and we're going to figure out which one overlaps most with our ground truth label. And we're going to adjust that. So we want to increase the confidence and we also want to adjust its coordinates. We also want to look at the other bounding boxes predicted by that cell and decrease their confidence since they don't overlap the object. Uh, and we're going to have a lot of cells in this image that don't have any ground truth detections over, uh, overlapping with them. So we just want to look at all of the bounding boxes for those cells and decrease their confidence as well since they don't, have, they don't contain any objects. Uh, one important thing to note is that we don't want to 
adjust the class probabilities or coordinates for those bounding boxes. Since there aren't any actual ground truth objects in that region, there's no ground truth labels that we want to predict there. So uh, our training of this network is actually pretty straightforward. It corresponds to a lot of uh, standards in the vision community. So we pre-train on ImageNet, we use stochastic gradient descent, we use lots of data augmentation, and you can find a lot of details uh, about our training methodology in the paper. In practice, the system works pretty well. So it works across a variety of natural images. Uh, you can see it does make some mistakes. It thinks the person in the right-hand image is an airplane. Um, we also found uh, some interesting properties of yellow. So it generalizes really well to new domains. Uh, we trained it on natural images and then ran it on artwork. And it still manages, despite changes in texture and things like that, to detect all of the objects that you would normally expect. Uh, and, and even with sort of abstract representations of people like in Scream or Cubist artwork. So we tested YOLO uh, on, on a couple of standard data sets for uh, training on natural images and testing on artwork and found it outperformed a lot of other uh, detection methods like deformable parts models and RCNN in this generalization process. We also have trained YOLO on uh, new data sets. So Microsoft Coco has 80 object categories instead of the 20 in Pascal VOC. So we can just check that out quickly. And Microsoft Coco has, uh, like I said, 80, 80 classes. Ooh. I have to turn on my light so that my, my webcam actually can't quite keep up uh, in, in low light situations. So this is uh, our model trained on Coco, and <laughs> I don't know what it said. It really, likes, it really likes saying that white shiny things are toilets. Uh, and now it recognizes when I put on my tie that I have a tie on. We also have a variety of fun objects to play with over here. So let's see. We have some dogs uh, and things like bicycles, sort of standard stuff. Uh, and, and we can do things like zebras and giraffes now. Um, we have this, this bird, uh, some potted plants with, with their corresponding vases. Uh, and there's a person riding a horse. Oh, and, and you can also point it at itself, and it knows that it's a laptop. But bad things start happening if you go too deep, so. So uh, I also just finally want to say that all of, um, all of this code is available. Our training, testing, uh, and demo code is, is online and has been for the last year, so definitely download it and play with it. And... Um, we're working on a few things in, in terms of future directions, but one exciting thing is uh, we've been combining this with some work on uh, XNOR networks, so the binary version of networks, uh, to make it faster and try to get it to run uh, on smaller things like CPUs or embedded devices. So thank you, and I can take, I guess, the one question.